Welcome back. I can't wait to we... Welcome back to another episode. Oh, we, we got we got issues coming up, people. We're about to go. We're talk. about to really deal with some issues down the road. But right now, we're we gonna deal with this topic that this guy went. This little kindergarten stuff we're about to deal with. We got some real hefty stuff we gotta none, work through. None of the issues that we address are kindergarten. You're right. We, we build on it. You know, yep. stairs. Yep. We keep building. But I'm there, doing fantastic. Let's move on. There are. A lot more topics that we definitely are going to address as we continue to build the base up, as you continue to, you know, like the video, share the video, comment on the video, and gain new subscribers. There are definitely more things that we will <laughs> deep dive into. Ooh, to the wing. And I hope you have your heart ready for this. I hope you have your mind ready for this. And I hope the Spirit of God is working through each and every person <laughs> who's presenting the information. With that being said, you already said how you're doing. So let's jump straight into this. I want to talk about the God of all. Capital A, capital L, capital L. Now, as you may know, God demonstrating his love for, for humanity, right? Um, still show that humanity was not good, that they were sinners, mm -hmm. okay? The purpose of why God came is completely different than some impacts or effects of the atoning work of Jesus Christ, all right? Just let me build for a second. The purpose of why he came, right? We can find that in 1 Corinthians 15, right? We can we can find out that there was none not righteous, and then we can actually dive into the fact that Christ came, that he died, that he was buried, and that he was resurrected, right? For us sinners, because we needed atonement for the penalty of sin, our sins. That's the purpose. But there is also impacts or effects to what Christ actually did, or or the love of God being demonstrated, the Father sending the Son, the Spirit raising the Son up. Here's what I mean by effects. We're going to talk about one of them today, which is him being the God of all. The very fact that Christ comes into the picture and we look at him in, in, the, in the new covenant, right? I like to say new covenant more than new testament. But we look at him in the new covenant. We don't see this association with a specific country. We don't see an association with a specific group. What I mean is... If you go and look into the Old Testament, we see Israel, mm -hmm. right? He's he's the God of, of, of Israel. Mm -hmm. But when you start to look into the New Covenant, you see that he's the God of all. He doesn't remove Israel and still doesn't uh, remove some things that he's still going to work through them. Mm -hmm. But we see that a benefit or a impact or an effect of Christ's coming is that we find this diversity, but we also find this unity. And I want to talk about that. I want to I want to address that, and I want to address that also of why that's so Im important. For me, that's just so unique when you look at other religions. How it's always associated either with a specific gender or it's associated with a specific uh, language or associated with a specific type of people. But I constantly look at Christ. I constantly look at who He's addressing who he's dealing with he's dealing with rich people he's dealing with prostitutes he's dealing with drunkards he's dealing with samaritan he whoever you see him constantly dealing with different people and you see this unforced diversity mm -hmm. everybody likes to talk about diversity today right there's this push there's this devotion to making sure everybody understands you know respect everybody and and, and to the point um, there's sometimes where it's we can see it's 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 forced, mm -hmm. right? Um, I think we as believers don't spend enough time addressing the uniqueness of. I, I mean, is it all right to say religion, <laughs> like our, our religion? I, I get it for 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 a term to for for, for a term's sake. The discussion, yeah. There's there's a uniqueness there. Mm -hmm. That's not talked about enough. Okay. The diversity of this religion. Yes, because you look at other religions, right? And I don't mean to harp on, but I have to look at what's 
dominating, right? I look at Islam, and we see from their origin how this religion spread, right? It was conquering things. It was by force. It was by force. By force. That's right? clear. That's evidential. We look at even other religions such as Mormons and, and, and how it wasn't until the, like the 70s that they allowed black uh, priests or, or people to even preach or to be recognized mm -hmm. in their religion. So we see this like distinction of only certain people getting yep. in. Or, and even if you look at maybe not religions but other ways of life, it's associated to a race or an ethnicity. But there's nobody on the face of this earth who can lay claim as a Christian and say, it's for us, race-wise. The ethics, yeah. Yes. The ethnicity of it, yeah. And I get it. This is not the purpose of it. It's the, the purpose of the gospel was not to create diversity for us to say, hey, God is diverse. But it also allows us to reflect on the love, the unconditional love mm -hmm. of God <clears throat> distinct from other religions. Other religions have a morally deficient God. Okay. I'm with you. And because they have a morally deficient God, their God can only love a certain race. He's only applicable to a certain gender. It's only applicable to these things. I wouldn't even... Well, go ahead. I'm sorry. Because I was going to say it's more than just that. Well, it's no. also more... It's also the love is arbitrary in the sense of in order for the God of other religions to love you, you have to love him first or else he hates you. Absolutely. So that's a, that's a clearly moral deficient God that that's a great point. You have to love him first before he'll love you or give you any benefit. Like that's contrary to the biblical God. Absolutely. And, and that's, we have numerous I know people can say, well, I can show you verses about your God and, 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 and how he wanted to wipe out different people and things like that. And and we're not taking away from those verses. What my counter to that without going into those verses and explaining is how many verses talk about his unconditional love? Mm -hmm. How he, many verses that talk about them being sinners, them being wicked and he still loves them? But when they use that as if God is annihilating a, a group of people that they see in the Bible, the judgments, right? Right. They're completely misinformed of that moment, of what he was doing prior to that moment. Yes, He's always absolutely. sent warnings and opportunities for a nation to repent, a people to repent. He always grants opportunity for men to submit themselves back to his order rather than them walking in their own order. And so... When God did use Israel to um, conquer nations, it was a form of God's judgment, not him just saying, I don't like them today, and I'm going to go and annihilate them because they haven't, uh, for whatever reason. Like, when you look at it, it was based off of his judgment, not because they weren't aligning themselves with they're not an Israelite or they're not this. It's because they chose to disobey God. You with me? I'm with you. But he's always... So that shows a form of his justice. So again, you're see, you're extracting something about the Godhead or his character and create a deficiency there that really isn't, isn't a deficiency a yeah. at all. Because he's actually addressing, uh, like you said, a justice system. We live in a world, a, a society today, where if somebody got away with something, we are highly Angry. upset. Angry. I, give him the death, even up to the point, give him the death penalty. Mm-hmm. Well, when God institutes the death penalty, mm -hmm. <laughs> then there's an issue mm -hmm. that he's not mm -hmm. loving. But that, that also brings out another point about God being this God that's equal and fair. Uh, another thing about having this diversity and this being this God for all is that there's this fairness across the board that God is revealing himself equally to everyone. Yes. There isn't this... To the Israelites, I'm going to give you special revelation. To the Gentile, I'm not going to provide you anything. Just go and get this information from them. You you see God being able to allow from Bible, even up to early church history, mm -hmm. God working through the means of this. And to me, this is so important because you look in society today, right? Everybody's trying to figure out... Which religion uh, shows the most loving God, the most merciful mm -hmm. God, the mm -hmm. most uh, forgiving God? 
What's the God that allows us to be free in our in our in our will? Mm -hmm. What's the God that that you know can show that he he created me in his image and his likeness and, and, and all these things like that? And I constantly keep running into who who's the God that's 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 the most diverse? Who who isn't a misogynist in 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 religion today? What, what what religion doesn't have that? Every religion I see doesn't have women being being uh, utilized and not not this Bible. There are at least three places in Scripture, Steve, where the phrase "there is neither Jew mm -hmm. nor Gentile," mm -hmm. there is neither slave or bond servant or free, nor is there male. Mm -hmm. Or female. Right. The only place you'll see where he puts all races and ethnicity on the same playing field, all genders on the same playing field, economical status, and your economic status on the same playing field. And yet, going back to my other point, what group of people can say he is for us only? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jews can claim him to be the God of Israel. Mm -hmm. Okay. Muslims, Arabics can claim these these things, right? Even the uniqueness in language of, of, of how much, going back to the impact of God okay. in, in, in his diversity. Okay. Muslims will tell you if you don't read the Quran in in its original language, there's there there's nothing there. You're not getting the the the, true the essence. impact. You're not getting the true essence of what's this Bible, God's word, he has been all over the continents. Mm -hmm. You name them. Mm -hmm. How many languages, you name it. How mm -hmm. many, from the poor person to the rich person, God deals with and, and addresses. Mm -hmm. How much more diversity would you want from a religion than Christianity? What is the flaws there? If you're a person living in today's society if you're this person who's like i don't feel like women's rights are being addressed i don't feel like men's rights are being addressed mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i don't feel like race is being addressed god is putting everybody on the same playing through field. those verses that we just read or that you addressed not the purpose of white game mm -hmm. but the impacts yeah i get it the results from him the results we are death, all burial, resurrection at the same point mm -hmm. I feel like we miss that as believers. And here's why I say we miss that. Because if that's what we're being shown mm -hmm. scripturally, if that's what we've been shown historically, Christ is getting them to see from the parable of the good Samaritan, Israel, how you're treating your Samaritan. Like, I know how the world sees the Samaritan. I know how. Why is it that in our conduct, even as believers, we don't demonstrate this to different races? Mm -hmm. Or different genders. Mm -hmm. We drop this somewhere somehow. What's your thought process? Because we, on it? We, well, you're saying basically what you're saying is the results of his death, burial, and resurrection. There should be much more of a broader impact, diversity-wise, when we de when we brand Christianity to something. So if I brand something to Christianity, there should be a plethora of diversity within that because the results of his death, burial, and resurrection produces such a plain field of equality because in his eyes, we are all one, right? Right. Therefore, the, those that are components or supporters of that belief system should resonate that kind of mentality across the board. There should be the sense of there is no male or female. There is no black or white. There's no poor or rich as a Christian in a sense no. of how our affections are measured towards those people. And so therefore, when I'm hearing the definition, love thy neighbor as thyself, thyself isn't on the premise of me being rich and myself and my rich people I'm going to be nice to or love. No, meaning me as a human being that is created equal across the board in the sight of God. I love my, I'm going to love others as myself, meaning we're all co-equal in the sense of who we are as people before the living God. And if I understand we are all equal literally equal in the sight of the living God, then my, my understanding of Christianity should be so vastly diverse, meaning I should be able to say anybody of any color, race, ethnicity, they're my brother who've come to Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior.
to be their Lord and Savior. I remember you talking, addressing before that you grew up in a multicultural church. I did. And you loved it. Loved it. And I did when I was younger, grew up in it. So none of these issues really were, were I paying attention to until I started to not go to that church anymore and started to see how much you're, you're seeing like white church, black church, Puerto Rican church. And, and I'm not knocking that depending upon what geographic, yeah. like, whatever the uh, demographics are. Yeah. But what I'm saying is you almost shelter yourself up to the place to where it's like, all right, this is how we worship. And this is how we do things. And uh, we're not going to play the drums. We're going to play the guitar. We're not going to play the guitar. We're going to play the drums. You get to this point where it's like, wait a minute. We're losing sight of the diversity here. You're losing sight of the fact we're all coming together as one. We're, we lose the sight of also, which is something more important, bearing the burdens now mm-hmm. of things that could be going on in society. Let's say our Asian brothers Correct. and sisters in the, in the faith. Correct. Because our mindset, right? Let's say we go to all white church. All right, our mindsets are focused on something completely different, completely, com- completely different political issue, cultural issue. Our mindset is not even going to think anything about this because you will only to a degree. Here's what I mean by that. Pay attention to what I'm about to say. Oh. I'm not sure if we said this before. If I talk, I feel like we may have addressed this before. But anyways, there's a vast difference between sympathy and empathy. A white church or a black church looking at an Asian church or a white church looking at an African church or an African church looking at a Hispanic church, whatever it may be, yes. because you understand the knowledge of Christianity, the specific highlighted terms of Christianity, love, respect, generosity, righteousness, and so on. When you hear about an event occurring in another community of ethnicity different than yours, you'll have sympathy. Why? Because you'll understand from your own experiences what pain is like. Now watch. Empathy is different because sympathy is seeing their pain through your eyes. Empathy is seeing their pain through their eyes, which requires you now to dig a little bit deeper into understanding what's affecting them that's causing that pain. You want to understand, am I contributing to their pain because I'm understanding I'm having empathy, seeing their pain through their eyes. For instance, if you understand the pain they're experiencing is because of a systematic oppressive system that I myself am not experiencing but I might be contributing to that. So when I see an injustice in that community, I can feel sad for a mother who's crying because their son was just shot wrongfully. And I can be like, that has to hurt. They lost their son. I don't ever want to lose my son. The difference is having the empathy to realize I'm angry for her because her son didn't have to die because the system that caused his death is affecting all of them very deeply. And I am not experiencing that oppression from that system, but I have a voice that could have helped bring change to that system. That's now having empathy because I'm feeling their pain through their eyes. You understand what I'm saying? I understand. Big difference, a big difference. Just because you can associate with somebody's pain through the, your lens has nothing to do with you acting on it, right? Because something's going on over there that your lens doesn't have a lot of distinction in it. So therefore you look through your lens about their pain by saying, I would never want that to happen to me. Oh, I know it's, that must be hard because I couldn't imagine me losing my family member or whatever. It's different when your lens is painted with empathy and your lens looks through that, uh, your eyes look through that lens regarding that pain. And you understand why they're crying, why they're angry, why there's that kind of uh, uh, attitude going on. And I see how I might be able to help now because I'm seeing their pain through their eyes and I'm feeling that burden now. I could act on that. That would be true diversity. Which would require a willingness to have the Spirit of God really convict maybe some cultural upbringings, maybe how you may have lived you know growing up you're nurtured into that lens yeah you're nurtured into that like, lens. I'm, I'm nurtured to only see yes certain struggles yes. based upon where i grew up yes and how they affect you and you, you'll let those affect you deeper that you might act on them 
I could still see somebody struggle and pain because I'm looking at it through my lens, right? Like a daughter, daughter, they lost their daughter. I wouldn't want to lose my daughter. I feel that. But am I angry enough because I see through their lens of them crying because how they lost that uh, loved one was through a system that is oppressing them systematically over and over again, repeatedly, that now my lens I see through now realizes I could do something about that. I have the power to do something about that. Because I would not want any human being, not my race human being, yeah. any human being to feel that pain. That's sad, that's, dis- that's, that's horrific. And to carry that. Can you go to the verse uh, in, in the New Testament that talks about partiality and how God is no respecter of persons? So what he just did was, he just allowed you all to watch him show that he didn't know where the verse is. He knows where I know where it is, and he's asking me to look it up without him saying publicly, hey, I don't know where that verse is from. Can you look that up for me? Thank you for providing the audience with an education <laughs> of, of what I asked you to do. Hopefully next time you'll just do it <laughs> when I ask you to. James chapter 2. In James chapter 2. Um, I just want to I want to conclude on this, on this verse, uh, on these verses. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I want to say something really quickly too. Going back to God being the God of all as an impact and a benefit. And I talked about how, you know, you could talk about the Crusades, but we know that that's a misrepresentation. Everything from the scriptures we see, if you rejected what Christ had to say, you didn't see him threaten to kill you. You didn't see things. You had already condemned yourself. He was crucified. It wasn't he went out and and committed any violence. Right. I'm building somewhere. Disciples, same thing. Uh, crucified or, or, or killed or, or murdered wasn't going out and doing the, the murdering for you to be convinced of the truth. And you see this consistently with uh, Christianity proper that it has always been God of all, a God for all, and a God of love. Even Paul would say, if they didn't accept the information, I, I, I dust my feet off and I keep moving. For us, I think it's just so important to always understand the impacts of what God did and, and how he's consistently not a moral, morally deficient God and, and how we can consistently show diversity. But let's go to James chapter two. chapter 2. Verse 1 starts here. My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, comma, the Lord of glory, comma, with respect of persons. For if have not. Have not. Yes. That's what I said. Yep. Have not... The faith of Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and Savior, have it not with respect of persons, yes. meaning yoked together with saying, I believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, but at the same time, from the same consciousness, you have respect of persons. Yes. It goes on to say, For if there come unto you in assembly a man with a gold ring and godly apparel, right? And there come in also a poor man in vile raiment meaning clothing, and you have respect to him that wears the uh, gay clothing or the happy clothing, and say unto him, sit thou here in a good place, but say to the poor, stand thou there, or sit here under my footstool. Question is in verse 4, here's what he says. Are you not then partial in yourselves and are become judges of evil thoughts? Hearken, my beloved brethren, have not God chosen the poor of this world and so on. But what he shows is, is that Individuals at this time in the church actually were carrying themselves or conducting themselves with the mentality of they feel good about having faith in Jesus Christ, but with the same consciousness, they were able to distinguish in their mind two sets of people, the poor and the rich. And they, at the same time, assessed how they would behave based on what they saw upon the person, a poor person, a rich person. The rich person, they respect and they greeted gladly. The poor person, they did not respect and shunned and pushed them off to somewhere in a place in the congregation that was considered less seemly, meaning less uh, appropriate, kind of like, you know, peons. Right. And here we see the Bible referencing, do not have Don't this type. Don't have that kind of faith. And then we know it, there are some other verses, uh, at least in the Old Testament, that God talks about how he's not a respecter Correct. of persons or for partiality. So I just want to bring this up. As a mindset, if you're a believer, to really be thinking about if God really died for all, 
right? For those, I mean, he for everyone, even the people who rejected him, then that's the character in which we should go out demonstrating towards other people, especially amongst our unity as believers. If there's a burden going on, if there's an immoral thing happening to a certain group of people, but we know this is impacting our brothers and sisters in the faith, then our mindset should should bear this burden. Our mindset should be there. It shouldn't be, well, you know, God will take care of that. That's the part of this uniqueness of this religion, that we are the most diverse religion because we have a God who's the most morally sufficient God and who's the most loving God. So think about that. Think about when you read verses about every nation, every tribe. When you read verses that say, neither Jew nor Gentile, neither bond servant nor free, neither male nor female, how much God is, the impact of his atonement sets everyone with equality. And that's how our mindset should be thinking. Mm -hmm. And that's how we should be gathering amongst each other. Mm -hmm. um, just have that thought process. Think about that as you go along your day. Whether you're in America, whether you're in Africa, there are things going on in different continents that where our mindsets probably don't even care about or think about because we're just focused here. He's not the God of America. He's not the God of Europe. He's the God of all. Any country, any group of people, and sometimes we forget that and we need to be very conscientious of that. He's the God of all and for all. Um, whosoever should call upon the name of the Lord. It's not God bless America. It's God bless all. I like that. Maybe I should make a shirt or something. <laughs> God bless. Thank you guys for watching another episode of Real Talk. Make sure that you like the video. Make sure you comment on this video. Make sure you share this video. And there's one more thing that they have to do. Make sure you go and gain one <laughs> new subscriber. God bless.